Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm creating an abstract art journal page in my Moleskine watercolor journal. I'm starting with the Derwent Inktense pencils and I just pick some colors and play randomly on the spread. I want to see how the paper works with the watercolor pencils and I just want to have a creative play and I enjoyed this so much starting with those pencils. It's a really fun and nice way to start an abstract piece. Maybe you notice it, I have a brand new microphone. I invested in a better one um, than the one I've had before and I think it uh, sounds really good and I hope that um, my voice is better now because sometimes people complain in the comments that they can't understand me. So hopefully um, this one is better. If you make such a page, I would recommend to just try out different color combinations and also possibilities of mixing with your watercolor pencils on a piece of scrap paper or if you have one in your color palette journal maybe so you have an idea what you are doing and what the color will be you're ending up when you go in with a brush. The Derwent Inktense pencils are not only watercolor pencils, they are ink pencils and when you mix them with water and the pigment gets completely dissolved, then um, they are permanent. So it's a good product as a base layer because this won't be reactivated when you go on top with water again. What I also love about this way of creating the background is that you will have some leftover pencil marks or you can have some leftover pencil marks which um, gives your background more interest. As always, I have a blog post linked up in my video description where you can check out some detailed images of the finished page. And you can see my color scheme today is a little bit autumn themed. It's warm and cozy. I would say. I now go in with water and a brush and I'm just playing with the colors and this is the most fun part of this process. I just can recommend trying this out because it's so much fun.
As always, I am leaving the video in real time, so if you want, you can paint along. Um, if it's too slow for you and you want to have the process a little bit quicker, I recommend using that setting. It's a little gear at the video screen and you can increase the speed of the video. I really enjoy how the colors come to life when you mix them with water. I feel it's such an amazing step in the painting. And here I accidentally had some splatters and decided to add a lot more. I will now leave the page to dry and then I come back and I will add a little bit of collage on top and of course a lot of mark making. I'm starting with a little bit of quinacridone gold acrylic paint and I just add some marks with a brush to my spread. I'm working with the acrylic paint because they are more intense than watercolors and they will give me more coverage on this background. And also the acrylic paint always has a little bit of a texture which also makes the spread more interesting.
I'm working intuitively. I just go with the flow and that's what I love about playing in my art journal. Just make marks and add color without thinking. And I'm not afraid to ruin anything because I can just go over it. It's a mixed media page. I can do what I like to and I can just adhere a piece of paper on top of an area that I maybe don't like. And with every risk you take and with every mark you make, you'll learn what works and what doesn't. And sometimes you will be surprised about the outcome or the result. I really like the texture I'm getting here with the acrylic paint and the brush I'm using. Instead of using a plastic or wood palette for my acrylic paints, I'm using always a piece of paper. Here I picked an old book page. It's so great to use those pages later in collages because you have so many different and random colors and marks. And you will always find something that matches your idea. And that's why I always use a piece of paper for my paints. Sometimes I use a thicker paper, sometimes I use a newsprint paper or just a cheap printer paper. And here I'm spreading the rest of the paint all over the book page, so finally it's not wasted. I want to add in some more darker areas and I'm using the sap green from Schminke for that. It's my favorite green acrylic paint color. It's so gorgeous. It's perfect for jelly printing. It's um, a, just a wonderful color. And this time I'm using a bigger brush and I just make some bigger marks. And here you see me just making another leftover paper with a new book page and I'm making some marks with the leftover paint on it. I truly believe that these are the best collage papers you can get just plain without any goal and without any idea just randomly and then later you can Pull them out and they will create a fantastic new project. 
I pulled out some of my jelly printed scraps. They are all papers that I have already started working to work with. I cut them up and here I'm going through the whole stack and I'm searching for colors that are matching my spread. If you are interested in a jelly printing video, I have a few of them on my channel and I will link up the playlist at the end of this video. When I'm collaging on such a colorful and busy background, I always try to find colors that I have already on my page. I don't want them to be totally different because then I have the feeling everything tends to look separated and not like a, like a one piece. I finally made my choice which papers I want to use and I just teared some pieces out and here I'm gluing them down with a glue stick. Now it's time for some mark making. I'm using my Neocolor 2 crayons. I really love them and I think you can see how often I use them. They are a mess, but um, they are my absolute favorite tool to play. They work on almost every kind of surface, so you can work on acrylic paint and of course on watercolor paper. And they are pretty opaque and that's what I like about them. I also just make some intuitive scribbly lines and dots and marks all over my page. I try to pick colors that are going with the background and that are not too different. And here you can see I picked a red which was not on my spread. It was not too different compared to the other colors, but it really built a contrast against the green. And I just added some small accent to make it pop and to make it interesting. I also wanted to do some mark making with the acrylic markers or with the Posca paint pens. And here you see me creating some dots and I will also make some line drawings with those markers. My favorite motifs are always nature based. Um, I love plants, leaves, flowers or trees and that's what speaks to me and what I really adore and so I try to simplify um, those kind of shapes and add them to my artwork. As an inspiration for my botanical line drawings I am using for example, a very old book from my grandparents with some herb images in them. And I also have a lot of vintage botanical books laying here that I find really inspiring. I'm using colors that are building a contrast against the background so they pop up even more. 
and that's the reason why I picked white over the dark blue and here I'm using a violet over the yellow area. I was not sure if the violet leaves are visible enough, so I decided to fill one of them in with a different color to see if it looks better. I picked white and I think you will agree, but I hated that. It was not very pretty and so Finally, I decided to cover this area up and leave the leaves as they are. To cover this ugly leaf up, I'm using one of the papers I have created before. The color is obviously matching and I also have the same marks on it and I think it matches my whole spread very good. I'm really happy with the spread. I'm just adding some more details here and there with the Posca paint pens, some dots, some different colors, and then my page is done. The video is coming to an end. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you are inspired to get out your tools and play. I wish you a wonderful weekend. Bye!